Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Did you have a good Thanksgiving? Yes. No family drama, I hope, right? You guys are still talking to each other? Thanks be to God. I had a really good Thanksgiving with my family. We all were down in uh, Torrance, and we had a wonderful gathering. So we, it was good to be with my family, and uh, please know that I was praying for you in a special way on Thanksgiving Day. You know, one of the ways God has blessed me in my life is I've been blessed to lead a few Catholic pilgrimages to various parts of the world, the Holy Land, and mainly in Europe. We, I was even blessed to go to uh, Guadalupe this past May. But one pilgrimage in particular, I had a very challenging group, to put it lightly, right? I called them my complainers. No matter what, they were the ugly Americans. Never happy, right? And when we got back to LAX, we were tired. And I'll be honest, I couldn't wait to get rid of them, all right? <laughs> and when we got to LAX, the, there was something going on at Customs and Immigration, and the line was backed up. They said expect to wait at least two and a half hours, right? And, you know, when you're tired and you've had a long flight and you're kind of smelly, right, and you're just exhausted, you just want to get home and take a shower and get to your bed. And about 30 minutes into waiting in, in line, a man who was working at LX said very loudly at the loudspeaker, hey you, come here now. He was talking to me. <laughs> and I got a little bit nervous and I didn't know what to expect. So I, I kind of ignored him because I was startled. I didn't think he was picking me. He said, come here now. So I did. And I walked up <laughs> towards him and I was nervous, right? I began to sweat a little bit thinking, oh my gosh, did someone put something in my bag or something? And he said, sir, I pulled you out of line for one reason. We are in Los Angeles. And he pointed. He says, you see those people right there? They are from San Francisco. And I looked at them. They were all wearing San Francisco Giants shirts, all right? <laughs> I was wearing a Dodger shirt. And he says, you get to cut all of them in line because we're in L.A. and you're wearing Dodger gear. Right? <laughs> I said, thanks be to God. <laughs> right? But that story always makes me smile because you know what my prayer is for you every day? That you get to go to heaven because you're such good people and that you know that. My hope and prayer is that when you die, Jesus is going to see you and say, Wow. You live such a good, holy life. You must be from Holy Family, South Pasadena. <laughs> I don't want Jesus to say, you must be from Holy Family, South Pasadena. What did Father Ricky do down there, okay? <laughs> I see a lot of goodness in each and every one of you. I've been here almost two months now. It's very obvious to me that you love Jesus as a parish. You love Jesus so much. You have this beautiful mission in Haiti. You love Jesus so much that you bring the gospel to life. But we could all do better, myself included. So this gospel is a reminder to all of us that Jesus wants us to work for his kingdom now. To not wait till tomorrow, but because we love our Lord, to be active in our faith, to not sit back and to do nothing. So when people encounter us, do they encounter Jesus in us, or do they not? I hope people leave you after a conversation that they're better off. I hope you're not that parishioner that walks into the door and people go, oh boy, here they are. <laughs> so how could we be the face of Jesus to one another? We do that by helping each other out. It doesn't have to be grand tasks. It could be something as simple as, I'm going to help around my house a little bit more. Or you know what? Something's pulling at my heart to help the newly arrived immigrants, and I'm going to help them. Or maybe the unborn. Whatever, whatever your passion is. But Jesus is telling us to do something, and not just help. I'm sorry, he's telling us to help, not just to sit there. We come to Mass so that we can go out into the world and bring the good news to others. 
And what does Jesus tell us very clearly the gospel? To help those who need our help the most. The poor, the imprisoned, the outcasts. We live out the gospel, my friends, by showing mercy and forgiveness. I've shared this with you before, but I still have family members that don't speak to each other because they voted differently in 2020. (laughs) Crazy, right? You know, when you die, I hope you're going to be judged for being so merciful and loving. I don't want Jesus to look into our hearts and say, you held the grudge for 35 years. You chose not to forgive. How wonderful it would be if we were known for our mercy and forgiveness that we showed towards each other. Nobody's perfect. Let's be patient with one another. We need true inclusivity like Jesus. Radical inclusivity. Not choosing who we're going to love because they fit our, who we like. From inception to natural death, all human life is precious in the eyes of God. So what does that mean? You have to love people who vote differently than you. You have to love people that you don't always get along with. You have to love people that have a different skin color than you. It's easy just to be around people that are similar to us, is it not? But my friends, Jesus welcomed everyone. Everyone. What did he do? He went out to the outcasts of the sitter and embraced them and said, Welcome. Are we truly welcoming? My friends, where is our true home? Here on earth or in heaven? Where? Heaven. 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 That's where the kingdom is. But we need to bring the gospel alive. So we get so worked up about things here on earth that we can't control. But our true home is in heaven. So I like to stay. We're at a visiting away game right now, right? (laughs) Our true home is in heaven. Next week, my friends, what season do we begin in the church? Advent. Advent. And our faith formation team did something so wonderful for us. You're going to receive an ornament today. That ornament is not for you. You're already here. That is for you to invite somebody. Invite them back to Holy Family. But you need to give them a reason why they should be here. Why should they come home to the faith? Tell them how much you love being here. But more importantly, look that person in the eye and tell them how much they mean to you. How much you want them to be part of this faith community. And welcome them back. And make them feel loved. Do not get that ornament and say, where have you been the last three and a half years? What's wrong with you? That's not going to (laughs) work. Tell them how loved they are. And welcome them home. So we have a lot of work to do for our Lord. But I'm so honored and privileged to look at these wonderful disciples every day when I'm here at Mass. And I want to remind each and every one of you, God doesn't make junk. He made you the individual, beautiful person that you are. So go out and show the world the goodness that you have and bring your faith alive. And never, ever lose sight that one day we will be with Jesus, the King, in heaven. So my friends... The decision is ours. We could sit back and do nothing, or we could choose to answer the gospel and put our faith into action. So remember, heaven awaits us, and I hope and pray that one day, God willing, we're all going to be there together with our loved ones and all who went ahead of us. So, As we end this liturgical year and celebrate Christ the King, who are you going to reach out to? Who are you going to invite back to Holy Family? Who are you going to welcome and embrace and say, welcome home? 
as we prepare to begin Advent next weekend. Let's think of one person right now. One person that you're going to give that ornament to and that you're going to welcome home to Holy Family. So let's think of one person right now.